All right. We fought our way through to the point where we get to actually propose an algorithm that we think might be reasonable. And uh, you may have noticed that I said there was going to be this idea of reductions that came in. So the promising approach that I'm going to look at is a reduction from the unequal stable marriage problem to the stable marriage problem, because there are similarities all over the place between these two problems. At the surface level, sure, but the surface level is often misleading. There are lots of similarities at the structural level. They're almost the same, right? We had almost the same named quantities over and over again. We referred back to SMP when we defined things. Even instabilities, where something was quite different with USMP, we had this new type of instability. It looked almost the same as an SMP instability, and we defined it in terms of an SMP instability. So my approach at a super high level, my approach is going to be to reduce... USMP to SMP, that actually doesn't solve the problem. All it does is describe how I would solve an instance of USMP in terms of a solution for SMP. So if, unless I have a solution to SMP, this doesn't give me an, a solution to USMP. Fortunately, uh, we have Gail Shapley. Uh, so and I'm going to say, and then use GS for SMP. So in general for reduction, you don't have to have a solution to this problem over here. You pretend that you have a solution, but you don't have to actually have it. In this particular case, we actually have it, and that means when we're done, we'll actually have a solution to this one as well. Generally speaking, the way a reduction works is you assume you have some function that solves the problem that you're reducing to. You give it valid input for the problem, a valid instance, and it gives you a solution that meets all the criteria that you're concerned about. And you can call that over and over again if you want to and use it as a, a subroutine, as a function in your algorithm for the problem you're reducing from. So that's the really general version. Pretend you have a function that solves, in this case, SMP, and using that function as you need, solve USMP. Very, very often, we actually only call that function we have to solve SMP once. That is by far the most common thing we'll see in reductions, is that we're going to take our USMP instance and we're going to massage it until it becomes a single SMP instance. And then we'll call our function to solve that SMP instance. That'll give us an SMP solution and then we'll massage that SMP solution into a solution to USMP. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, I'm going to approach it that way under the assumption that we only need one call. It's worth remembering that you can do lots. So let's see. To do this reduction then, what I kind of need to do is take a USMP instance And since I assume I'm just calling the, my SMP solver once, I need to turn that into an SMP instance. Then I can call the solver. Here, let's, let's put that in. Call. We know what the solver is, so I'll actually say call GS. But generally speaking, you call this magical function that solves SMP. It gives you an SMP solution. Not just any solution, but in the terms we've been using, a valid solution and a good solution. And we're going to turn that into a USMP solution. And that indirect way of solving USMP becomes an algorithm that we can use to solve USMP. We wrap it up in our own function, and anybody who calls our function has no idea that we're not just going directly across. We're compiling down to SMP and then decompiling the solution back to USMP. That kind of means I need to focus on two things. I need to focus on how to take a USMP instance and turn it into an SMP instance, and how to take an SMP solution and turn it into a USMP solution. And I'm going to start with the left-hand one. Given a USMP instance, how do I turn it into an SMP instance? And of course, if we're not sure how to proceed, how will we start? I'm going to hear everybody in the audience of the screencast shouting out to me so loudly that I can hear it here in my living room waiting for my young daughter to start crying in her sleep again. We go back to the trivial and small instances. It's way up now, so it'll take me a moment to scroll and find it. Here's our trivial and small instances. Okay, so this is our workhorse right here. We've used this one over and over again. 
So we're going to take this instance and we're going to compile it down to a USMP instance. So what do we have to do to turn this thing that is not an SMP instance, it's a USMP, what are we going to have to do to turn it into an SMP instance? Well, USMP is allowed to have more men than women. SMP is not allowed to have more men than women. So we're going to have to add a woman to this instance. Woman 3. Right? Now, woman three doesn't exist. Woman three is a fake woman that we add so that we'll have the same number of people. So it's going to be hard to know uh, what the preferences of woman three should be. That's, that's a little weird. Uh, what should the preferences of our fake woman be? Uh, but we do actually know what the men's preferences towards this fake woman will be. Right? Because remember, the fake woman represents the men who don't get paired. In USMP, those are the men who are left over. In SMP, they're going to get paired with this extra woman that represents being left over. And we assumed every man prefers any of the women to being left over. So we'll add this fake woman on the end of every man's list. So man one will have one and two, and then at the end, three. Because three is the fake woman that he doesn't want to be paired with. And man two will have two and then one and then three, because that's the fake woman he doesn't want to be paired with. And man three will have one and then two and then three. So that alone would, well, it would almost turn this into an SMP instance. We also need woman three's preference list. And I don't know, I don't, I don't have an idea how to make the preference list. So for the moment, I'm just going to say her preference list will be one, two, three, because that's the easiest thing to imagine. Or we can just say it's arbitrary, any preference list you like. OK, that's, a, that's for a specific instance how we do it. Let's try and generalize that so we can reduce any instance of USMP to an instance of SMP. So what we're going to do is add enough fake women to make nw equal to nm. So we're going to add nm minus nw fake women to w. That'll be enough to make the two sets the same size. So we're good now on the sets themselves, but we have to update the preference list. So update the men's preference list, update all men's prefs to include all fake women at the end uh, in arbitrary order, I mean, in order by their numbers, something like that. Again, we don't really know what to do with the orders. Uh, so that takes care of the men's preference list. The men's preference lists have to list all elements of W, and they now list all elements of W, the real ones first, and then all of the elements that are fake. We need a little bit more here. We need to, so this is add to get, add, add enough fake women to make the sets equal, update the men's preferences, and then update the women's preferences to include, and I'm going to say arbitrary preference lists for the fake women. Now, I want to note here, all this arbitrary stuff I did, I don't have any guarantee at this point that it's going to work. But I can guarantee that it produces an SMP instance. I mean, look at these three steps. If you take a USMP instance and you make it so there's the same number of men as women, and you make it so that each of the men has a permutation of the women, including the fake women, as their preference list, and each of the women, including the fake women, have a permutation of all the men for their preference lists, that's an instance of SMP. So whether or not this whole thing is going to work, I can now call Gail Shapley on it, and it will give me a solution. Okay, so what am I going to do to that solution in order to take 
the SMP solution, which is going to include some of these fake women, right? In particular, it's going to include all those fake women. The fake women will all be married to some man because SMP guarantees a perfect matching. What do I do to turn that into a USMP solution? So I get a set of pairings. I want to turn it into a USMP solution. Well, we just said all those fake women are married, right? In USMP, we don't need fake women to be married to men. If we want to say that a man isn't married, we just say he's not married. We leave him out of the solution. So all we really need to do is for all fake women remove her pairing from the solution. So now none of the fake women are left. All of the real women are left, right? Because SMP will pair every single woman. It paired the fake women, it paired the real women. We got rid of the pairings for the fake women. The real women are now each paired to exactly one man. And none of the men has more pairings than they had before. They used to have exactly one pairing. And now a bunch of them are no longer married to fake women, so now they have no pairings. And that's fine for a USMP solution. So this is a reduction. We haven't yet established it's a correct reduction, but it's a reduction. It turns a USMP problem into an SMP problem, which we can then solve using Gale Shap.